Um, and this represents, you know, roughly a 300% increase in gold recovery. Hi, I'm Andrew Gillis. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development with Sepro Mineral Systems. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Sepro's new innovative frontier bowl for gravity centrifuges. In order to do this, I'm going to be walking through a white paper that Sepro has published uh, that's available on the website and uh, very likely in the link in the description below this video. So let's get started here. Okay. So what we found is that this bowl delivered significantly higher gold recovery through a variety of different um, tests and trials that we ran. So a walk through following this paper, the uh, traditional Falcon bowl and the traditional Nelson bowl talk about what's different in the Frontier bowl, why we believe it achieves significantly higher recovery. And then I'll present some results both from pilot testing and industrial trials for this new centrifuge bowl. So starting here, uh, why use a gravity concentrator or a gravity centrifuge? These are typically installed in grinding circuits. It allows gold to be removed from the grinding circuit earlier on in the process to prevent uh, over grinding and smearing within the milling circuit when there's free gold present. Um, it can generate a high grade saleable gold concentrate very quickly. They can be often sold to refiners. And third, and I think most importantly, it will remove the particles, the gold particles in the circuit that typically cause the most issues with downstream processes, be it through uh, grade variability, uh, large size, strange aspect ratios. So what it'll do is it can take a very um, variable gold feed grade and lower it and homogenize it so that downstream processes such as flotation and cyanidation can be much easier to operate uh, within the recovery circuit. So the traditional gravity concentrators are the uh, Falcon concentrator that we see here and the Nelson concentrator. And together these two make up pretty much 100% of the gravity concentration market in the mining industry. But um, you know, as you can start to see from these cutaways, they're somewhat, they're somewhat different in the way that they um, are arranged from a geometry point of view and from a recovery point of view. So I'll very briefly talk about these differences in relation to what we call um, the dynamic slurry face in a gravity concentrator. So when you have a centrifugal action, so this bowl is uh, spinning this way, the material will build up in the bowl wall and can form what we call the dynamic slurry face that we can see here, where you have the material riding up the bowl wall and then exiting over the lip. And the difference in geometry between the Nelson and the Falcon concentrator makes a very big difference in the way that uh, the slurry behaves in the machines. So this is the profile of a Nelson concentrator, uh, for example, where it has an inclined wall. And typically what we'll see, you know, we have this listed at, at 7%, the, dyna the dynamic slurry face um, will move around a little bit depending on particle size, depending on slurry density. Um, but in almost all cases, this is, the dynamic slurry face is steeper than the Nelson bowl angle, which is, you know, roughly about 14 degrees um, from vertical here. We're talking about this. So what that causes to happen is that no overall slurry face is created, but we've got these slurry faces in each of the riffles. And so as the slurry travels up, it moves over and then forms an eddy current in each of these riffles. So every time it falls over, there's a new little eddy current created, and these disturb the fluidized bed and promote recovery of gold particles. On the other hand, and this is the um, bowl profile for a Falcon concentrator. There are, it's a two stage zone where this stage um, is about 14 degrees. Oh, sorry, I was a bit off here. The Nelson is about 13. This is about 14 degrees from vertical. And then this, this part of the bowl in the front is vertical. 
So you've got this dynamic slurry face building up at kind of the natural angle of repose of the slurry, depending on, as we said, um, particle size and slurry density. And then there's a relatively quiet zone here where the retention ripples are. So the idea is that the particles stratify, the heavier particles get pushed against the bowl wall in the smooth zone, and then they're retained in the collection riffles in this relatively quiet zone that doesn't have any eddy currents being created. So this begged some questions around which method of concentration is better because these are obviously two very different methods once you get act or mechanisms of recovery once you actually get into the details. And there have been some, you know, anecdotal reports in the industry that like, oh, Nelson's a bit better at coarse gold recovery, Falcon's a bit better at fine gold recovery. Uh, so we decided to test this out to see if that was actually the case or not at the pilot scale in our research facility. So we made a uh, Falcon bowl and we made a Nelson bowl, like our Nelson profile bowl and a Falcon profile bowl and put them in a common mechanical platform so that all the other variables in the test were the same and tested two different ore types. And basically this is what we found here. Uh, in the copper gold ore that had um, substantially finer gold particles, you know, the Falcon did a little bit better. In the higher grade gold silver ore that had, you know, well graded, but materially coarser gold particles, uh, the Nelson did a little bit better, but something to take home from this is that really both of these results, I'd say, were in the range of experimental error when it comes to mineral test work and gold sampling. Um, so for me, this is pretty inconclusive, which frankly speaks to the industry observations where, you know, we haven't seen any clear published data on this machine's better at this and this machine's better at that unequivocally. So I think like largely we, we corroborated the anecdotal reports um, from the industry here. But then the next question came up. Okay, well, if these have two fairly different recovery mechanisms, what would happen if we combine both of them? So this is where we came up with the Sepro Frontier Bowl. And the way that this profile works is we have a, you know, I'm going to call this a quasi-parabolic shape here where the bottom riffles start at you know around 30 degrees from vertical so much much steeper than the dynamic slurry face they progressively decrease over the height of the bowl until we've got the end of the bowl here or the top end of the bowl being vertical and terminating vertically so we've got a severe eddy current zone a less severe gentle eddy current zone, a transition zone where the angle is, you know, roughly equal to the dynamic slurry face angle, whatever that's going to be for the particular slurry, and then finishing vertical. So then we have this quiet zone without any eddy current action mimicking the Falcon recovery mechanism. Okay, so what happened with this one? In this case, we've got significantly higher recovery than both the Falcon and the Nelson when we combine these mechanisms of concentration and have this gradual transition zone. So on the fine gold ore, uh, we have, you know, relatively speaking, about a 50% increase in recovery. And on the coarser particles, relatively speaking, we've got about a 20% benefit. And what we saw when we looked at the size by size recovery information for both of these is that the recovery was improved over pretty much all size fractions with a considerable benefit on the finest particles um, that were recovered in these pilot samples. So on the basis of this, we decided to conduct some industrial trials at the plant scale. So we created a frontier bowl that could fit into a Nelson XD48 concentrator that has a nominal capacity of, you know, 400 tons per hour, give or take. We went to a operating gold mine in North America that had two XD48s operating so that we could put the 
Frontier Bowl in one and use the standard Nelson profile in the other and run these head to head to see what would happen. So we ran each bowl uh, for a couple days to look at the average performance using you know standard plant, feed rate, operating conditions, fluidization rates, cycle times. And we found a very significant increase in recovery for the Sepro Frontier Bowl in that operating plant environment. Um, and this represents you know, roughly a 300% increase in gold recovery. Uh, over the two trials, the feed rate was, you know, the variability was within 10% in these two trials. So for gold sampling, that's, that's pretty good. The Frontier Bowl had a slightly higher feed grade, but to uh, corroborate these results, we have the cyclone overflow grade here. And we see that the Frontier Bowl generated a significantly lower cyclone overflow grade, meaning much more gold, even though there was a higher feed grade, much more gold was being uh, removed from the grinding circuit using the Frontier Bowl as opposed to the standard Nelson Bowl. So on the back of these results, we are um, now uh, starting to offer the Frontier Bowl for all models of Falcon concentrators as well as a retrofit part for all models of Nelson concentrators. So regardless of whether you're um, operating a Falcon concentrator or looking to purchase a new concentrator or you're operating an existing Nelson concentrator, you will be able to take advantage of the Frontier Bowl and the increases in gold recovery. If you'd like to have a read of this white paper on your own, please visit the Sepro website. I'm sure there'll be a, a link in the description of this video so that um, you can have a look on your own. And if you have any questions, comments, um, please reach out and get a hold of one of the gravity recovery experts at Sepro today. Thanks a lot for watching.